Hello everybody. Welcome to my channel. This is Tina at Tina Stitches. This is a channel about cross stitch. Maybe a little bit of life update, but it's a channel about cross stitch. If you hear some dog crying, that's Khaleesi. She can't make up where she wants to be. So I'm going to pause the video for a second and put her on the floor. Okay, so here is Khaleesi. She's not doing so well lately. She has rheumatoid arthritis and she's not doing so good today. So we'll see how she does. I'm going to put her on the floor right beside me. She could be hungry and needs to go eat, so you might hear dog food crunching. Okay, so cross stitch. Uh, it's been three weeks since my last video, and um, uneventful as less eventful than the last video that I had. Um, but I was not able to record last week because we had to do inventory at the store. So I wasn't available. So, you know, that's how it goes. Life, right? I have worked on a number of things. I didn't even make a list this time. I'm just going to go by what I have stacked in front of me. I'm pretty sure that um, I have everything. I don't have any haul yet. I placed a couple of orders um, because I'm, you know, searching for Magnifica beads now. So there's that. Um, I do have a fully finished object, but no other finished objects. So, yeah. Where do I start? Okay. I'm going to start with the one I did not bring the project bag for, but that's okay because it's pretty much finished. Um, it just needs the beads, the charms, and a little bit of whisper for the tail and then this one will be finished. This is Blitzen by Nora Corbett. I started this in Mania of 2017. Uh, Mania hasn't been a thing for the last two years I believe but it was a thing a while ago. It was uh, starting all the things in May, and this was one of the this was the first year I participated, and I started all of these Christmas Eve couriers by Nora Corbett. Still working on them. This is stitched on 32 count Nocturne Belfast linen. As you can see, he just needs a tail. She just needs a tail all the beads and charms, and then she will be finished. I've, you know, played around with the idea of doing a snow day stitching or just the 25-7 type deal with these, and it kind of worked. I kind of did it, and then I would find something that would stall me and I'd get frustrated and I would put it aside. For instance, this one, I couldn't find the gold Krynik and I'm like, I must have it somewhere. Turns out I was using Petite Treasure Braid. So that would explain why the Petite Treasure Braid was in the little box next to my chair. 
So I just picked it up and started stitching again on this. So the border is complete. There's actually an outline border that goes around it. So I could probably, you know, pick up a strand and put that in every day. I should. I think my dog has to go outside now. We'll see. Um, okay. So the next one, I did make goals for the monthly magazine challenge group. It's a challenge group that is intended for you to pull out those magazines and start working on the stuff. Hold, please. Okay, so hubby is taking the dog outside, so we'll do a little bit more filming, then we'll stop, film some more, stop, film some more. Okay, so yeah, monthly magazine group was originally intended to work on, bring out those magazines and work on those projects you've, you've been dreaming and working on. Um, I usually try to do my theme for the group from a magazine, but this time the theme was magazine uh, needle workshop, and I don't have I have two projects currently in the works from magazines. I don't really want to start another one, um, and the two that I have on the go are nowhere near being needle shop needle workshop related. So I picked a whip, a work in progress, that I needed to pick up anyways and make it work. And this is the closest one that I have to a needle workshop theme and it is Dressmaker's Daughter by Mirabilia. Here's what the finished design will look like. And here's mine. I'm stitching mine on 32 count Lavender Mist Belfast Linen by Extra Designs. Pretty sure it's lavender mist and I worked on summer because it's winter and if you've been with me you know that I've been working on this project in the opposite season so there's the full view and it did not have any of this down here all of this was finished minus the beads. And so from the stem of the stand down, all of this is new. Uh, in case I didn't mention it, today is Sunday, March um, 12th. It's five in the evening but daylight savings time so it's nice and bright out right now i don't mind it it does actually work in our favor here so it's crummy to lose an hour but that's okay okay I really do need to look at the shopping list for that to see if I have all the beads because I know I did buy a good portion of them when it when I first started it but and now I'm nearing the end of the stitching um, really the only one that has a lot of stitching left on it is autumn which I'll be working on starting May, March 21st, I can switch over to autumn, but yeah, 
Okay. So, next in my pile, Adia, the Garden Fairy by Mirabilia. This is being stitched on 32 count Belfast Linen. Huntress by Picture This Plus. I've been forgetting to show you before pictures. Here's where it was when you last saw it. And here it is now. This is um, not a lot more since my last video. This bit here has come down a little bit. It's about maybe 200 stitches that I got into this over two nights. Um, this is for the A in Charge It, the acrostic for the monthly magazine challenge group. So the theme was Needle Workshop and the two options for acrostics were Etsy or Charge It. And I went with Charge It because, you know, if you're going to join a challenge, it might as well make it a difficult one. <laughs> I'm nowhere, I'm, I'm usually not in the challenges. Um, I try them and then I fail. And then I try again, fail, try again. That's why I'm not in Whipco this year. I did very good last year. I did pretty much all of my goals, which was 22 hours on each project, as it was called. And I, the last one, I just like, okay, I can do it. Prove my point. Didn't do the last one. Anyways, um, Okay, so this one here is a project that my son had bought me for Christmas. This is Perman of Copenhagen, and his birthday was March 1st, so I do want to work on projects that have some kind of meaning on the days they have appropriate meaning for. This is um, stitched with the kit fabric, kit floss, everything. It's 35 count linen and this is by Perman of Copenhagen. So I was going to use it for um, E as well because I think it's Edinburgh linen but I'm not 100% sure of that. I didn't look too closely but I have another one that I know is Edinburgh linen, so I'll just swap out for that. But this I used for the C in Charge It for Copenhagen. And here's where it was when you last saw it. And here's where it is now. Well, actually, it is all of this, but this is the part that I worked on. I think I think the dog was there, but none of this, none of this was here. This is all new. So yeah, there's a lot to this design. I am only right. Where's the dog? We're looking at the wrong side. Right here. Over here. This part is not done. So we've done the ship and come across this way and did that. I have left out the letters for now, 
wherever there's the letters, it's almost all repeated. It's I A I I B I I S or B N. And I'm not exactly sure what that represents. I think it's, you know, appropriate to the person who made this originally. I'm going to figure out how to make it mine. So, yeah. So this is, um, I believe it's under Sampler 1819 in um, one, two, three stitch or wherever you want to find this permit of Copenhagen sampler 1819. I am stitching it one thread over two. Next in the pile, my project that I take to work for my lunch hour project. I think I did work on this the last time. I think I had a start on it, so I'll put that here. This is Three Violets Humbug by Just Nan. And I'm stitching it on 28 count mint green cashew linen that I had in my stash, which was actually from another Just Nan project. Um, but this was left over and it's the perfect size for it. And that's where it is now. And if I keep working on it at a reasonable rate, it might actually be done in time for Easter. I mean, that was three weeks. I think I have a little bit of time to go, so we'll see. Okay. Now I have three big projects, and I'm not sure which one I should go with first. We'll go with Hatter. <clears throat> because I also use this for the Magazine Monthly Challenge Group. And this was for H, because it's Hatter by Gecko Rouge. I'll insert a picture of what it should look like. And where it was when you last saw it. And here's where we're at now. And I worked mostly in this area here, bringing everything up to the page break. And there are about six shades of orange. I'm not kidding. So I did get quite a bit of progress on it because it's um, in Pattern Caper. It's easy to pick a color and just go. And I'm trying not to park, but I have to park sometimes when there's just nowhere. <clears throat> Even though this is gridded fabric, this is 20 by 20 grids. I'm not relying on it at all. Um, I use it just as a reference, like, yes, that's that's on this side of the line, so it must be in the right place, but I am not using it for counting off for traveling really far with my thread. So if this, if this strand here is required, like over here, I'm going to park it and wait till I have more filled in, and then I will pick that up and work it some more. I kind of use the typewriter method on this, but I go by area. 
So this session I was focusing in this area, coming across and working it up as much as I could. So that's me. <clears throat> okay, another big project. I am a sucker for, for punishment. This is Stitching Shelf Max Color by Amy Stewart, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. Here's what it's supposed to look like. Here's where it was when you last saw it. And here it is now. So as you can see, I am filling in this vignette here and working my way out. Um, some of the colors, I didn't want to park in this area. I want to get this finished. So I will come across as far as I can and then park it over here simply because then I can move the Q-snap, pick these up, which is probably my next step. Um, once I'm finished this, I will move the Q-snap down to the next row, work all these in, and then continue. Because I'm finding that I do not like working in among the park threads. So I work them in and then go from there. So that's where I am. And that's one of the reasons why I don't do a 10 by 10 block and park. Also, th this is so heavy in confetti that you do one stitch and then you park it over here. Do a one stitch, park it over here. I would just rather do the 17 stitches and then park it further on. So that's me. This one is, you know, it is typewriter method, but again, in this area I'm focusing. So I'm filling in from up here down. So all the stitches are stitched up to this line here. And this color, this area is going to be pretty much one color. That's all one color. And then it's confetti over here. So it shouldn't be much longer. Now I started this in August last year on World Cross Stitch Day, which I believe was August the 12th. And I started it with Kim from Stitch and Stuff and Carolyn Zuck from uh, Seasook Stitch. And in our discussion with a lot of other people that were stitching it, we had a, a Zoom meetup that day, that day for the stitch along. And we had talked about if we stitched 100 stitches a day, it would take us 10 years to get this finished. So today I decided to do a calculation on how far ahead or behind am I. And I haven't been posting very much in the Facebook group, which we created specifically for this, um, but I did post it today. So you may have seen that, which might be, you know, a couple days ago for you now, but, or a month or two or whatever, whenever you see this, <clears throat> I posted that um, I was at 19,786 stitches. It's been 211 days since we started this project, so I should be at 21,100. So I'm 1314 short, 1,314 short of being at that 10 year goal. Is it reachable? You know, that. So normally I would switch between stitching shelf and inner depths until 
I reach the thousand stitch mark and then switch trade off. Um, I may I may work on stitching shelf a little bit more because I also want to get that little vignette finished before summer, spring. Because then I can move into summer, switch with the season. Um, it'll be off season, but whatever. I've been working on the spring one since August. So I believe, yeah, it goes spring, summer, autumn, winter. So anyways, the other one, the other big ass project, BAP, that I work on that uh, is the one that I do switch I trade between stitching shelf and this this is Inner Depths by Chris Ortega charted by Heaven and Earth here's what it will look like when it's finished and where it was when you last saw it and here it is now And I can almost get it in frame. There we go. So I finished coming across this way up to row 20, I believe. So I came back over here and I'm working, I'm filling in up to row 30. Again, typewriter method, not quite the same as Stitching Mommy, but it's mine. Um, I like to do in rows of 10 and fill it in and work my way across. I had been, when I worked on Beloved, I had been, you know, doing this and then parking it below. But again, I don't like working among park threads. So I am stitching in as far as I can comfortably reach. And with this one, I'm using the away waste knot method for ending my stitches because this frame is difficult to flip from front to back so it's just easier to use a loop method to start and a ways not method to end so this is where I'm at now and this one I started last July before I started stitching shelf and um, they're both about the same size so they should if I keep switching between them 1,000 stitches 1,000 they should both be finished about the same time too wouldn't that be amazing okay I forgot one I'll be right back. I had a new start. I forgot to bring this. I, I worked on it two days. And then I stopped. For no particular reason, just that, um, well, you know what? I'm going to blame Carolyn Zook. Um, it was March 1st, and the monthly magazine challenge had started. And this wasn't in the plans. For that so I'm teasing I didn't it is a project that I bought for myself with money from uh, a, a viewer and so I really thought I really do need to pick this up and work on it because it deserves to be worked on this is the piece scissor tag by the drawn thread and I'm using a piece of 35 count Belfast linen that I had not Belfast Edinburgh linen that I had a scrap of and I'm using just some thread from my stash it called for silks it called for specific silks which I didn't have but I went through and found 
some nice alternatives. And here's where I'm at. So when I was stitching this also, I had made a mistake. I st started with the border, I started the lettering, and when I got to the A, I made it the same height as the E and went all the way across and then went to do the border and realized the A was bigger in the middle. So I, I did have to frog that and then restitch it. But aside from that, <clears throat> I really like it. Um, one of the other things that has me going, uh, pausing on it, is this is a really decent sized piece of fabric for more than one of these. I could probably squeeze one, maybe two more on here because I it's possible to get one on the side, but I started in the middle and it's, it's a really pretty size considering it's supposed to be a scissor tag. So yeah. I was going to say maybe I should work on this today, but I have different plans for today because today is the second Sunday of the month and that's when I work on Vintage Simplicity, which I have right here ready to go. Uh, Vintage Simplicity by Dimensions, which looks like this. and. Here's where we're starting at. And yes, I still have to take that out. So that'll be the first thing I do is fix that. Won't be hard. That's supposed to be a red shoe. So that's my plans for today. A uh, fully finished object. I do have one. I just put the last little pieces on this. It's so cute. It is the Winter Mouse Needle Roll, Scissor Roll by Just Nan. Come on. Of course. She's going to wobble off. So I did the finishing. There's a little snap button. It unrolls. There's the wool lining. And there's a little tiny pocket here for you to stick scissors in. I don't have scissors immediately handy, so we'll just use the pencil. It just rolls up. And snaps shut. So it's, it's kind of hard to say that the scissors and the mouse will fit on here at the same time, but that's all right. It's just cute as it is as two separate pieces. They're cute. So fully finished. I even, okay, I did not glue her little pom-pom on, but I think the 
stick pin will work just as good considering that's all they did with the little decoration on the front there is just a little sequin thing held on with a pin. Now my pins are long so it does want to stick out the bottom so got to be careful. Okay so I do have something I'm going to share with you from last time. I promised a giveaway. This is still not fully finished, but I did finish stitching the Big Hearted Tiny Town by Heart and Hand. And yes, I did see the new Tiny Town that's out at Nashville. I'm not it's it should be on my wish list I don't have it yet I almost I almost pre-ordered it but then I was like no calm down it'll still be available so anyways this is up for grabs and I'm going to pause the video while I pull up the YouTube comment picker. Okay, so I am at the comment picker. I've entered my video. I put in the comment heart. And there are 13 people who entered that word on that video and we're going to draw Elise DA beautiful projects hearth love this project hope everything is better for you yeah that was a rough video um, so I'm going to write that down. Um, Elise, if you can uh, get a hold of me either through Instagram or Facebook or I will put my email in the drop down below. I don't usually but I will this time. Um, if you get a hold of me and get me your address I will shoot this in the mail to you and you can start it for next Valentine's Day. Maybe we'll have them both FFO at about the same time. The way I'm going, yeah. Um, the only thing is there's no, the charms, little tiny buttons aren't included because I use them. So, I think really that is it. I am, went over my plans. Uh, I'm going to try to catch up on stitching shelf, you know, 10 year marker goal. Um, yeah. The um, acrostic also has me going to plan to pull out my sexy sampler and <clears throat> Royal Tudor. <clears throat> Royal Tudor Mandala. Um, I do have goals for the Royal Tudor Mandala to have a certain area done every month and I have not <clears throat> touched it yet so hopefully we get to that. Also sexy sampler. Speaking of which, if you haven't checked out Gail's Golden Needle, go check her out. She's also working on a sexy design a black on pink and um, she's really worth checking out so I know she's under the 1000 in the under 1000 sub club so if you can go give her a view and 
subscribe to her channel. That would, you know, help another fellow floss tuber out. So, with that, I think I've said it all. So, yeah. Take care of each other. Take care of yourself. S stitch when you can. Stitch what you want when you want. Or, you know, follow the rules. Stitch according to what the challenge tells you to, if you must. And, uh, yeah, until next time, which could be a week, two weeks, three weeks. You know how it is. Happy stitching.